Here we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another State of the Metaverse Live, bringing you the best news from around the world about the Metaverse, the world that will take over the world. Wait, what? Anyway, it's good to see you guys again. <laughs> Let's go over uh, what I have in store for you today. So obviously, like every week, I have an amazing guest. Once so every often, you stumble across an unsung hero, a hidden champion, someone who single-handedly has the potential and probably already has changed an industry. And yet, they're not famous. They're not shouting their names from the rooftops. They're not crying for attention because they are so utterly visionary and enthralled with their own work and the mission they see for themselves. Today I have for you Mao Lin Liao, and he's one of those rare people. But before we get into that, I also want to give you guys a quick update on Beam Up, what I like to call the Beam Update, what we've been up to. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a quick meta update. So uh, we're going to talk about some news from the metaverse or the metaverse industry and we're going to do a deep dive into a super interesting topic, photorealistic avatars. First, let's go to the Beam update. Um, the company here that I work with and my team, last week we went to Belgium to work on defining our company culture. In the metaverse industry, with all these startups going around, it's of course super important to really know who you are what your identity is, what you stand for and what you believe in. And so here at BeamUp and your open metaverse team, we're working very hard to really get that identity clarified and cleared, uh, get our core values in line. And so we spent some time with the team in Belgium to uh, have a good time and find out what our artists, our creators and our developers, everybody on the team feel about, you know, what should be the core value of a metaverse company because ultimately our ambition is to build a company platform or sorry a, a metaverse platform that could define the next generation so there's that um, for our visual brand identity we're also working on a complete rebranding for your open metaverse and for that we're working together with a little company known as positivity branding well they're not so little in fact they are the guys behind a beer in the netherlands behind duvel beer in belgium uh, uh, they actually are the agency for the visual brand identity of lots of big brands from around the world. I uh, absolutely recommend you to check them out. Positivity Branding from Amsterdam. But that's enough about all of that today. Let's go over to that unsung hero that I was talking about who is waiting to have a chat with. Mao. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Hey, Aragon. Thank you so much for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm going to move the camera a little bit because I see that you're a little bit in the wrong place. There you go. It's fixed. Cool. Wow. Um, obviously, I've done the research or I should say my team has done the research. And uh, you know what? For those of you watching the stream, I've been working with Mao for a while now. And I really thought that I knew this guy, right? I knew that he's a brilliant designer. He makes really cool avatars, which we're going to look at in a second. But then when we do did the research for this episode of State of the Metaverse, uh, my team suddenly showed me all this stuff that I didn't know about you. And I, I want to go into all of it. But before we do that, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, according to yourself? Well, you know, there, there's many description for me. I, um, you know, you know, those memes that you see people what the my mom think I am doing, what my friends <laughs> are doing, uh, what I'm actually doing, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, have, I have three versions of you. So what people think I am is a digital human expert, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but what uh, my friends think I'm doing, I'm a character artist. But what my colleagues are thinking, I'm the boss. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I think it's, but today I would say, let's call me the digital human expert. Um, I'm, my background is actually in the gaming and the movie industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working in this field for more than 20 years. And I think um, uh, that experience is what I'm using here today to uh, hopefully sh show you guys a little bit more information about how we make avatars. Yeah, cool. So, um, you know, I want to I wanna show the people out there uh, a lot of things about you. So let's see if we can show them a little bit now. 
feel that Stephanie uh, Stephanie is the uh, chief and editor of the show. She's probably going to think that Aragorn is already going off the rails, but I kind of want to show the audience something about Mao that I only found out today, which is truly incredible. So here we go. This is a picture of Mao with literally 12 golden lions and one Grand Prix at the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity. So I absolutely didn't know this about Mao. Um, I totally want to get into, I'm going to switch back now, but I totally want to get into uh, how you got these later on. Mao. But you did this with your company, Replica, is that correct? No, that was prior to my company. So um, I don't know how much you want to dive into this, but uh, this was like done in 2013. Okay. Uh, and it was a, a collaboration with a, a bigger agency. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if you want to. Well, yeah. I wanna, uh, what I kind of want to know is we're going to have a look at your company, Replica, in a bit. But I want to know about your journey, because this was one of the milestones in a long journey for you, right? If, if I told you that I've been in the Playboy, that's also maybe something you don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when you were in I, Playboy? Yes, I'm the only guy in Playboy, but not as myself. <laughs> as, my avatar. Oh, as your avatar. Okay, cool. I'm saying I'm gonna surprise you more, uh, but this is one of the cool stuff that I've done in my life. I met uh, Jackie Chan in my journey. Wait, uh, what? You met Jackie Chan? Yes. Oh wow, this is crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, basically that's that's the most fancy part of my life. But there's also like a, a long history prior to become uh, where I'm at today. So there's a lot of struggle and uh, and also. Where I come from, it's a it's a long story. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of the things um, we discussed prior to uh, going live today was the fact that you you're actually a dropout, right? Yeah, I mean it sounds almost like cliche, right? I mean all those uh, tech companies uh, founders are dropouts, but it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to <the> club. <laughs> I'm a dropout too. <laughs> so, uh, so 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 you dropped out of university. What did you initially study, or, or where did you drop out exactly? Well, I in in the time that I was studying in 2000, and there was not a lot of uh, school that teach me about how to build a metaverse. Yeah. So, so that is the main reason why I dropped out. But um, but mostly is because I couldn't recognize myself working on something that uh, that I can relate it to. And I found that I learned more by doing things. And in and and I have a really stubborn view of how I see the world. And I guess that doesn't fit into those acad academic uh, view of uh, yeah of the rest. Yeah. Yeah, I totally know where you're coming from. I uh, I felt the same way during my studies. Cool. Okay. Well, um, now after after all the journey, and we're probably going to talk about all of that a bit uh, later on. But uh, you founded a company uh, fairly recently called Replica. Can you tell us a little bit of what Replica does? Well, Replica is the dream company I wish I had uh, when I was uh, working for other people a couple of years ago. Uh, as I said, I worked more than 20 years in this field, but none, not really one company really kind of, I feel home, you know, I'm sure you recognize this as well. Yeah. And then I started thinking, what kind of company can I build one day that is my dream company? And this is what Replica is, is about. A, it's a company that creates uh, the most realistic human digital avatars. Why? Because there is simply not really one company that's focusing on this aspect. Yeah. Of course, a movie company who make uh, like uh, ILM and digital domain mm -hmm. or games, company, but they're not focused on human only. They're doing more broader work of future effects. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and as I, uh, one of my mission with my company is to conquer this we call the uh, the uncanny valley that you see a lot with digital yeah. humans yeah that has become the mission for us awesome super cool so uh actually for those of you watching uh, the stream today if you're dutch there's a dutch television show called in den leven de live which actually translates to in the living flesh and in that show, they go back in history to, to uh, have a closer look at the most imp Im impactful historical figures of the ages. And uh, funny thing, I never noticed this, uh, uh, unfortunately, but uh, apparently the show is working with the world's best 3D designer. And his name happens to be <laughs> Mao Lin Liao. <laughs> right, Mao? <laughs> uh, yeah, I wouldn't call myself the best, but, you know, I, I think... Uh... 
there, there's so many people who are much better than me, but I, I think I, I, I'm pretty good at making people look real and, and good looking. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's television. So we, we of course, we, we need to uh, make some uh, promotional. So I guess I, just, I guess if they say I'm the best, I'm the best. It's, it's marketing, Mao. We need to have a talk about your marketing. But um, it's funny. <laughs> you just said, <laughs> you just said something about about realism. And uh, I want to quickly show you a little video, and I want to get your uh, I want to get your input on this one. Sure. Right, so that was Roblox. Roblox is working on uh, real-time facial expression tracking. So you're the guy that makes the super hyper photorealistic Uncanny Valley avatar. So wh what are your thoughts on this? Well, it's interesting that you bring this up because you know making a, a human looks real, like the picture. Uh, the other picture behind me uh, is, is one of those examples. Uh, and we can perfectly make someone look realistic in 2D, meaning old-fashioned photo. But when you start to move and talk, uh, when the, uh, that is where we perceive things uh, a little bit differently. And then if something's off, like the movement of the eye or the twitches, uh, that is something that is very noticeable. Um, so uh, this is actually the, where the Uncanny Valley uh, start to kick in. So I, I'm really uh, excited to see what uh, Roblox is doing on this part. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, for those of you out there that don't have kids between the age of 9 and 12, because uh, actually, apparently, according to research, over half then uh, kids in, in Europe and the US between the ages of 9 and 12, they actually play Roblox these days. So that's a massive part of a whole generation that is already living every day, co-creating inside a virtual world using virtual currency, in this case, Robux, which, uh, by the way, is not a cryptocurrency. It's a virtual currency. So it's actually not owned by the players. Um, but a, a lot of people are using this. Roblox is, is very, very big. So, I mean, with all of your talent, Mao, uh, why don't you just go make a cartoony world with cartoony avatars? Well, I, there's two reasons. One is um, I think um, more people can do these days uh, uh, cartoony characters, and I don't think it's a challenge for, for us as an artist. There's an artistic challenge. And the second thing is that I haven't seen a realistic avatar uh, deployed in a way, like you said, with Roblox in, 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 in game, that is so convincing that I believe this is a real person. And that, that means that we haven't scratched the surface of what the possibilities are when you have a fully uh, realistic digital human unleashed on, on, on nerds like us. So yeah, that, that is some, that's a question for me, you know, yes, um, we are focused more on the realistic side, but I do think that in the world of metaverse, there's space for both, like realistic and not realistic. Mm -hmm. And I think it's up to the people to decide what they want to become in the metaverse, yourself or the fantasy version of yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I already have some questions from chat as well. So maybe we can dive in in, in a few of those. So a uh, copywriter wrote, I would like to ask Mao about his game industry experience. I see that Killzone 3 was mentioned. I don't know where he saw that. Did you work in Killzone 3? Yes, I work for Guerrilla Games or these days Sony. Uh, oh, wow, you're really yeah. the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> okay, go on. <laughs> I also worked a little bit, little bit on Horizon uh, Zero Dawn and at the beginning of the prototyping stage. But yeah, that's basically the, the two games I uh, work. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Marky046 is asking, as such an amazing creative person, what do you do when the creativity tap runs dry? What are your go-to methods or things that you do to get back into the swing? Oh wow, that's a that's a deep one. Okay, asking for a friend. Uh, that's a very good uh, question. I, I have my own method of uh, art directing myself, but indeed, if you run out of creative juice, I would say do something completely different. Go sport, go go out, 
talk to friends, I go to nature. For me, I get a lot of inspiration from nature and doing something completely different. Uh, if you're just stuck in your own tunnel vision and doing only one type of work, you will never get inspired. So my tip is go do something non-CGI, not, not, not related to your work. That is the best thing you can do. Yeah, I... I, I... <laughs> I want to say, I want to give a tip here, but I'm not sure I should do this on a live stream, but, um, oh hell, fuck it. You know, Marky, uh, you know, what I usually do is I, I drink a really big cup of coffee and then at some point I need to go to the toilet and that's where the real magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually works. Uh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so Roblox, um, yeah, so 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 let's get back a little bit to the topic. Um, you said cartoon avatars. There's there's space for both, both photorealistic and cartoonish avatars. Um, can you say a little bit about you know when you would you pick a cartoonish avatar versus a photorealistic one? Because if you look, for example, at Ready Player Me right now, um, they're more realistic than Roblox, but they're still a far cry from the realism that you portray in your work, right? Yeah, but there's a reason. I mean, I can imagine some people who don't want to reveal the identity. So having a not so lifelike version of yourself is useful. Uh, for example, if you want to record a message and you don't want to reveal your identity, you can scramble your voice, but your face is still visible, right? So using avatars, we can actually hide a little bit of identity, or if you're not, uh, or enhance a little bit of identity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's one use case. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, um, are there any questions from the chat at this point regarding this topic? I don't think so. Cool. If there are if any questions uh, show up at any point, uh, I'll be happy to, uh, to ask them guys, uh, girls, uh, non-gender people, all of you. So I'll be waiting for that. Um, oh yeah. Marky says, thanks for the insightful answers. Cool. So I want to ask you another question, uh, Mao. So, do you ever watch television? Well, these days, uh, less and less, not because of the lack of time. Of course, running a business is uh, quite, uh, uh, take a lot of time. But also, the, um, the fact that you have to wait for uh, someone to tell you when to watch something and what time, it's so 2000. I think these days, people want to control their time, watch when and what the effort they want. Yeah. Um, and without that uh, so no don't watch <laughs> don't watch tv no. yeah so i stopped watching traditional television about six years ago and my mother always tells me that she doesn't understand because i she doesn't understand why i don't want to be informed because for her watching television is you know watching the news and being informed about the world and i still can't make her understand that you know there's other ways to stay informed uh, but one of the main reasons I quit watching television is just like you said, I don't want to watch commercials all the time. Now, I have to admit that unfortunately lately I've seen that even YouTube and, and other mediums have started uh, increasingly to add advertisement in between videos. So it's it's super annoying and then they make you pay to get rid of it. So, But research, uh, actually report by the Daily Mail... Um, in the US reported and again we come back to Roblox so like I said before not kids between 9 and 12 over half of them is playing Roblox and according to the media research firm Dubit uh, and the report that they po uh, uh, this was reported by Daily Mail sorry um, this is in big part due to the fact that kids prefer to go into virtual worlds where they can be interactive and engage rather than being passively watching television so uh, what do you think about that? What does that mean for our business? Well, it's, it's good for us business, I think. And, uh, <laughs> and I also have two kids uh, and they both love Roblox and uh, Minecraft. Uh, so I have a hard time convincing them not to stay away from the screens. So that's <laughs> me uh, as a parent saying that. Yeah. Uh, but on the other side, you know, as a from business point of view, I do think, wow, this is actually what we're doing with avatars and crafting the next metaverse is kind of uh, what they are doing, right? And Roblox is considered as one of those metaverse gateways, I yeah. would say. Uh, gateway, and I, drug. gateway drug, gateway <laughs> drug. <laughs> so, so imagine if, if my kids grow up with Roblox and Minecraft, and that's basically for them, that's the television for them. And because they grow up with that, and, yeah. and we grow up 
time that we watch television because there was no internet. So that's our real reality. That's our metaverse 1.0, I yeah. would say. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think it's it's an evolution uh, where we're adding that uh, that people want uh, freedom and of choice and uh, about your own uh, content, but also your identity. Uh, but which yeah. we we'll probably don't need to talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And so, what what do you think then about platforms like uh, like Netflix and and Amazon Prime? Right. I mean, it's not television traditional. You have more choice, but you still. Do you think that there's a future for those platforms? Will we always uh, also, you know, want to watch movies and stories and be passive? Or do you think that we're moving to a future where everybody wants to be in and interactively engaged with, with a different kind of medium? Or how do you look at that? How do you see that? That's a very good question. I also wondering the same thing, you know, how many times did I not uh, watch, I um, try to uh, watch Netflix or other stream service and I end up doing nothing because there's just overwhelming amount of options. And some of them, oh, I don't want to start a new show because I know I'm going to binge watch this uh, the whole night. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more thinking about um, content that's being created by, not by humans. Actually, I'm really curious about if people, you and me, we watch content that's created by AI, that is uh, creating like a live show, uh, like a TV series, whatever, but then not made by human, because yeah. we, we, we already use our imagination. We start to repeat ourselves by uh, rebroadcasting the same content and then bring things back from the 80s or 90s, pure of nostalgic feeling that plays on those. But but there's not really a lot of new content, to be honest. That's something that I like, oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah. and. I'm more. I'm really look, hopefully that the the, the streaming server will be more creative and try something like, you know, maybe use AI or machine learning to craft new storyline that we haven't thought about. Yeah, yeah. I I actually I used to play uh, a little uh, MMO called Star Wars: The Old Republic, and of course World of Warcraft was the the really multiplayer kind of big MMO. But one thing that I really liked about uh, uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic because they at some point made the decision to focus more on the on the campaign, on the single player experience. So you can still play with friends. You can be multiplayer. It's an MMO, but mm -hmm. it, it's really tailored around the stories. And yeah. at every point in the game, you can make decisions that will lead to different outcomes. And they spend a lot of time on crafting all these different storylines. You can go dark side, light side. And so the game is endless playability because you can experience the same adventure time and time again, but you can make different choices and have therefore different outcomes. So uh, is, is that the kind of thing that you would mean? Like, Yes and no. I mean, um, I think there's uh, yeah, people just who just don't want to think about anything. They just want to enjoy just brainlessly watching because you're just tired of working, right? You just yeah. want to enjoy a, a great show and, co and consume content. But there's a people indeed who, who need uh, to get some assignment by having this unknown uh, storyline. What's this going to be? Can I determine the future of this? So I think yeah. there's room for both. Uh, I don't think one will win over the other one, but it, I think we just need, we need to have both in, in, uh, in place. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Well, um, let's... Um... Let's move forward from uh, from the Roblox and the, and the nine year olds and television. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, one thing's for sure: you and me are not not really watching television anymore. And I know that your kids aren't watching much television, and none of the kids that I know watch much television. So the medium is going to change, that's for sure. Uh, but let's talk about the things that we're doing, or maybe more important, the things that you're doing to create those future engaging narratives replica uh, before we go into this uh, conversation and ask you questions uh, i want to show the audience uh, something about your company so let's do that first
Yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a very impressive video, uh, Mao. Can you tell us a little bit about all the stuff that we've been looking at? <clears throat> yeah, we. It's crazy the, the the fact that we've only been here for two years. We we done so crazy in many projects. Like you know, for example, we did with, uh, a gig with uh, Rita Ora that you show in uh, showcasing Skyline. Be, 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 uh, before you go uh, in, into all the projects that you did, please tell the audience exactly what it is that Replica does. Like in in one sentence, if you can. We create high-end digital human. Yeah. High-end digital, digital humans. Yeah. In fact, your your ambition is to create the most photorealistic meta humans in the world, correct? Yeah, I wouldn't use the term meta humans because that is a term claimed by Epic. But yeah, we we create the most realistic virtual version of yourself uh, that is so advanced that you probably can't tell the difference. Okay. Yes, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, you're right. The term meta humans has, of course, kind of been claimed by Epic. But let's be honest, don't think that they really have the right to that, because uh, meta humans, uh, virtual avatars—I mean, those belong to everybody. And uh, but uh, that, yeah. But you're right. You're right. It's a, it's a term that's much associated with them. Okay. So how does how does the avatars that um, that replica make? How do they differ from, for example, meta humans? Well, the yeah, we we're first we're more focusing on the 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 more television and the film side, which is basically a static film and and and, and image sorry, sorry image and film. But now these days, I think everything moved towards the real time, right? So um, the last two years, we we gather a lot of good people for, that's working, uh, great amazing characters that can bring them alive in Unreal and other game engine. So uh, the difference is that we we put a lot of attention to details. Yeah. For example, um, if you um, when you a human talk, you know, you, you know, my lips is not just flapping. <laughs> that's what you see. But when we talk, we my lips stick together. So we, we we basically do simulation of your lips, how they stick together. So that's not something you you think about when you talk about digital human. So, but the, the details are important, right? Because the details is what makes something look either human or fake. Yeah, because you you and me, we are. Everyone is a digital human expert because from the your birth, you recognize your mom. You've seen thousand, a hundred thousand faces. So if something is is off, you can tell immediately. And but often you don't know what that exactly is. Is that the eye color? Is that your skin tone is off? So, but. Yeah, you, your subconscious pick that up. So it's very hard for for a normal artist to to come up with a uh, yeah a way to 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 cheat uh, the normal people. And we we kind of like reverse engineering the whole digital human like what makes us human. Yeah. So we look at every aspect: the hair, the skin quality, your the light that hits your eyes. You know, I can go and talk hours and hours, but 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 these are basically the things that I we pay attention to. Yeah. 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 Got it. I, I totally know what you mean. Um, details. The devil is in the details. You guys are also working with virtual influencers now, right? Or is that correct? Yeah, we, we create virtual influencers for brands. And uh, one of the, uh, I think if you, um, it, it's, a, it's a huge, um, how do you say, trend now these days. I, I start to see a little more and more virtual influencers. And they are can, more... Can you tell us why that is? What do you think? What, what do you think that is? Well, they, the the rise of the virtual influencer is 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 great because first they, they compared to normal influencer they don't cause a scandal, the, the <laughs> brands are, they don't have a, a secret life that can cause any problem. They never get sick. I never uh, they thought of that work. actually. That's a good one. Yeah, they they're never work, sick too. Work. Wow, crazy. They work yeah. two hours. They never ask for a raise, and uh, and they don't ever get COVID nineteen. So perfect human. <laughs> But I mean, virtual influencers still need somebody to be in a mocap suit, right? So if that person then is sick, what does or do you then just replace that person? Yeah, technically you can just replace the person because uh, you probably won't pick up the difference uh, if it's if uh, the body a double is replaced. It's easy to find someone uh, that moves the same than finding mm -hmm. someone that looks the same. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, actually, uh, I don't know what Remco Sikama would have to say about that. Uh, Remco Sikama is, of course, from Xsense Movella. He was on the show a few weeks ago, and we talked about uh, a signature movement and how that's really a thing in motion capture now. So, But that's an interesting conversation. I should get the two of you on the show sometime to talk about that. 
Um, so um, let's see. Uh, yeah. So so virtual influencers, uh, avatars. You. How do you go about building a virtual avatar? Can you tell us a little bit about that? So there's uh, two ways we can do it. One is uh, sometimes a client asks us to come up with a completely new human, and that means there's a lot of creative process behind this uh, virtual human. We need to know what's the background, what's her age, what's her ethnic background. Uh, so based on those uh, requirements, we make a, a proposal and the client will say, good, or we need to work more on that. Yeah. And another approach, which is scanning a human, like uh, uh, we, we always do, uh, like the one you, behind me, is basically based on a real person. And we digitize him or her using a, a 3D scanner. Mm -hmm. And that is a, that, that's what we convert into a virtual uh, avatar. Yeah. Uh, that's also one way to, to do things. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, talking about that and scanning a real person in uh, <laughs> to make an <laughs> avatar. Why, why is this so dark? Let's see. Um, I want to show everybody uh, something. Uh, let's see. Do we have that? Yep. Here we go. So what are, what are we looking at here? Wow. This this uh, who's this? <laughs> this handsome guy. That's uh... who's this handsome guy? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so for uh, for everybody watching, uh, yeah, Replica, uh, actually Mao, the world's greatest 3D designer. I, he loves it when I say that. <laughs> he uh, he's working on an avatar for me, and uh, I'm I'm super super psyched for this. So I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of uh, what he's working on. This is the outfit. As you can see, the avatar is gonna be a little more skinny than me, so my avatar will look like pre-Corona Aragorn. <laughs> What do you mean? That's exactly you. <laughs> um, let's see. What else do I got here? Oh, it changed everything. Oh, oh, that doesn't work. Okay, wait, wait. So basically, this is a kind of interesting. Uh, maybe you can say something about this, uh, Mao. So I provided them with a, a mood board. So that's how it goes. So first, first I went to a virtual production studio, which in this case was with the uh, uh, School for Applied Sciences, the High School for Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. They um, basically made a scan for me. It was like a matrix setup with like 100,000 cameras around me. And they made pictures of me to make real pictures of exactly what I look like. And then I provided the Mao and his team with a mood board. So this is my mood board. <laughs> and I told them what I want uh, in terms of what it should look like. And then they went to work on that. And so basically through this uh, tool, uh, Sync Sketch, they, uh, they give me an insight every now and then on the, on the progress. And there's a lot of stuff here. So, for example, uh, this is one of the recent pictures on the progress they've been making on uh, making uh, making my head, making my face and my hair. Uh, I think it's absolutely incredible. Um, what's also super cool to show is the uh, the clothing. Oh yeah, I love that one. Um, you know, I'm so jealous of this because I I don't even have one like this, and you have. Uh... A very beautiful uh, avatar. Look at this. This is so freaking awesome, man. This is yeah. so freaking cool. And I'll tell you something else, Mao. I actually said to the team this week, I'm going to look for... I already think that I know. I found uh, a company that can make this jacket for real. Think, really? Yeah, Soul Revolver in Italy. Uh, they ah. do replicas of movie jackets and stuff. And they do custom jackets. And I think they could make this... I just don't know how much it will cost, so I'm gonna try and figure this out. But anyway, it's it's a like goal. How do you use the word replica to not only uh, describe us, but also the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me know if you uh, can make a replica for me as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely let you know, of course. Um, but mm -hmm. um, but but so this is you know this is the stuff that I get to see. I went there, they scanned me. But what? How does how how does it go? How does the process work of coming going from you know the pictures to the end result? So it, it, it's a lot of people think that oh, with a three D scan you're there, right? It's it's why well, why do we need uh, artists like us? But of course you need to um, convert the ideas that you have uh, about. Uh, and if you look at the, the storyboard, it's kind of like inspired by cyberpunk, right? Yeah. Sci-fi. So we, we, we need to create um, a certain um, feel and look that you're, you're, you're going to like, right? So we look for a lot of inspiration and we start sculpting the, the clothing, um, but the rest is also taken care of by a very specific team. So yeah. basically we have a team, just take care of your hair. 
we call this the grooming guys and yeah, yeah, the, the grooming guys yeah the, the 3d barbers i'll call it or the, <laughs> the hairdressers so we have people specifically just doing that and then we have people who just also basically manicure and, and paint your skin so for example your skin is uh it's, it's quite nice to be honest but we we sometimes put even more details that you can't pick up by the 3d scanner maybe more than you want uh but let me know if I, we're going too far hey, you're have... the first one that ever told me i have nice skin i mean everybody always tells me i look like a vampire but thank you so much <laughs> That's what that's our job to make you look less like a vampire, yeah. and uh, and that is uh, that's what we, that's the nice thing about the metaverse and about the avatar. You can make yourself as good as you want. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, you're already looking great, but I think with with some enhancement, we can make you uh, even better. Enhancement, I love it. Enhancement, I'm all for enhancements. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this is cheaper than a plastic surgery. Uh, so. Yes. Yeah, th this is a very interesting one, yeah. Because this is this is this is really what you just said is so. I mean, people don't believe it right now, and they don't see it because you know the people watching this show, you and me, we're like the zero point zero one percent of the world's population that are actually already living in that future that's heading our way, and everybody else is completely mm -hmm. oblivious. But within our lifetime, you know, within the next 10, 20 years we'll have a virtual avatar that we use on a daily basis that will be a photorealistic copy of us. Mm. And so plastic surgery, I mean, there, this is like, do, do you remember that movie with Sandra? Well, no, what was, well, there was this one movie. Oh no, it was this movie. It was Time Cop with Sylvester Stallone and Sandra Bullock. And then the, he wants to have sex, but she gives him this machine on his head. You, you know that scene? It's crazy. Yeah. Well, they don't yeah. actually go into a metaverse but I mean, I don't know, but maybe we, it could very well be that in the next, you know, 20, 30 years, people will completely replace some of the things that we do now in the normal world, like having sex. And they use some Neuralink device from Elon Musk and they just have this super cool avatar and they don't really need plastic surgery anymore. I mean, well, okay. have you seen the Black Mirror episode where they have two friends uh, playing games, like yeah. a Street Fighter game, and fell in love with each other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh that's that episode is so awesome and yet so nasty at the same time <laughs> sorry for ruining your 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 day but that is uh exactly what we're talking about yeah uh, uh yeah i i can't i can't imagine that i i am from the generation that uh you know of star trek right? where we have holodecks are these are the possibilities i see uh, uh coming and maybe we don't have to wait 20 years hopefully uh, and hopefully this will come sooner. And maybe the Neuralink will be the fastest way because you don't have to wait for graphics card to grow mm -hmm. uh, that fast. It's more about uh, stimulation of the nerves and, 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 and yeah. getting... But yeah, that's, that's, I'm, I'm curious which one will be first. The, yeah. Yeah. So what about, uh, what about ver super realistic avatars today? Are there already things that we can do with those that, are, uh, that can really make a difference in the world? I'm, I'm hinting here, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we actually one very cool project I, I was part of is a project called Sweetie. And uh, Sweetie was a virtual girl uh, that was used to attract pedophiles. And uh, Sweetie is so special, and there's also a reason why I won, uh, we won this project. Is This is the first time I see a virtual human or avatar uh, used in a case that's not for commercial use, but actually to make the world a safer place. And in the video, you see a researcher posting uh, as a 10 years old Filipino girl. And a girl, uh, her goal is to find out about the names of these pedophiles. And obviously, using your real identity or using a 10 years old girl is, not, is no goal. So using a virtual avatar is actually the perfect way to uh, entrap these pedophiles. And that's what happens. And thousands of names end up in Interpol. And there's really some change in the policies uh, in the worldwide after this project. Um, of course, I was not alone. There was a huge campaign um, and by Terdos Homes. I think it's a Dutch NGO. Yep. Uh, but the team behind that, uh, which is uh, um, Lambs, I remember, they they won the 12 corner line and one white line, which is for a good cause, which okay. is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so although, I mean, this is not a very, uh, very exciting, uh, you know, happy, happy, happy feeling topic. Um, 
but I think that it's good to sometimes also realize there's a lot of bad stuff going out out there in the world, and uh, and a lot of people ask the question, you know, what good is the metaverse for the world? What good is uh, our, our virtual avatars for the world? But here is is a perfect example of how we're already using photorealistic avatar, in this case, one that you made with your team, to do some real good in the world, right? To to really, you know, Absolutely. yeah. And I think that's that's incredible. It, it makes sorry to to maybe one addition. It makes me sleep well that I we we can actually contribute to the world, and and I don't think we should think about only black mirrors. I think we should think about the white mirrors. Uh, yeah. the, use case of digital human and since they are still looking uncanny and a bit scary but imagine if we don't we take away all this uncomfortable uncanny valley look imagine what kind of possibility it opens for the world you know yeah. think about healthcare think about people who are lonely and just want to talk to a person that looks uh and think about i mean my my brain blows up with opportunities every day like Think about self-image. How many people in the world suffer from low self-esteem because they have, you know, a bad self-image? And even though if I look at that person, I don't see anything bad or wrong with them. I see a beautiful human being, but sometimes they themselves just don't see that. But what if they could just create a virtual avatar that looks the way they want to look and with augmented reality glasses, they, that is what they can see in a mirror. Or perhaps even if they already use it on their phone, that might mm -hmm. that um, in fact i'm convinced i don't know if there's any research on this but i'm convinced that that will make these people feel better have better self-esteem and therefore be better able to function in the world have better social relationships it, it's stuff like that that really turns me on for this oh, i i actually have an example of such a project we we did a project for the uh, erasmus university where they uh, helped uh, the children who need to be prepared for operation to uh, 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 re remove the pain and well, how they do that they actually show the whole process and also themselves in, in virtual reality and um, with the doctor so that actually that is a research done by robin a uh, professor i forgot her full name but uh, but that was uh, in her paper she showed that it can actually help to relieve pain yeah. so here we go it's incredible it's incredible there's so many so many amazing things uh, coming our way so mm -hmm. now i already said a few things about you know my future visions for for the metaverse for virtual humans but um i heard that you have a very cool vision for the virtual humans as well can you tell us a little bit about that well i'm you actually we, this is first time i publicly talk about this project we are, um i'm really excited that we are actually working on a very cool uh, software that allow uh, people like you and me to have your own avatar that looks like you and as and you can customize this and do all this crazy stuff that you all want and uh, and that will be for free and that is what we are about we want to democratizing the avatar creation and give the power to the people and and this is uh, something that uh, i want to let you guys know that we're working on that <laughs> so what you're really saying is that you're working on giving everybody the superpower to basically virtually clone themselves so that they can have their clones do all the the stuff <laughs> is that what you say <laughs> <laughs> well the first step is uh, give you uh, an avatar so you can go to different places in the metaverse including uh, the beam up world or the other metaverse that we're about to build and then the second step is indeed world domination and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> world domination then, through virtual clones <laughs> yes. and the robots take over no I, i'm just joking of course, of course. but this uh, yeah this is what we're doing we, we want to give you guys the freedom to do what you want with your avatar cool let's uh, let's have a quick look at the chat because i think there's loads of questions coming in at least uh, a lot of people uh, at least are are chatting <laughs> Um, could our guest tell us a bit about their studio setup because it looks neat? Okay, yeah, you do have a very cool studio setup. It looks almost like you have a, an office uh, in Westworld. Did you see the television series, Mao? <laughs> yeah, uh, that Westworld. It's uh, that's actually what I want, but I, I can't have it here. I don't have actually. Uh, I don't really remember if you've been here, but I do think we, we do have a robot downstairs. You do. Oh, yeah, I've not yeah. been to your office because when I wanted to come over like two years ago, uh, we couldn't make it work because then we went into lockdown. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Sorry for that. So when are you going to come over? But we actually have a robot downstairs and that's a, a KUKA robot, like those huge really? crane. 
yeah i have one oh crazy i want to go I i'm definitely coming over to see that um, that's, like, that's awesome about my setup i actually oh it's mirrored uh we have a lot of like those anatomical uh figures uh that we use a lot for uh uh references and also animals indeed it looks like a bit like a like West West World. World. yeah Less, less uh, scary, I mean, creepy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, let's see, what else? Do we have any other questions? Haha, this escalated quickly. Having virtual sex. Yeah, this did escalate quickly. Sorry, guys. Avatars protecting <laughs> people. Also, think about students uh, that use animals in school to become a vet. It, it spares a lot of animal lives. Actually, yes. I mean, uh, Mao is into human uh, avatars, of course, but... Um, uh, in medical science, they're already looking at how we can use uh, vir digital twins, virtual twins, to test out how people will recover from surgery, how they will respond to certain medication. So for those, they'll need, you know, super realistic avatars, uh, both both internally and externally, of course. And right now, Mao is working on the externally. Uh, and I think that the internally will definitely be hard. But yes, that, that's going to be super exciting. How difficult would it be to render a realistic beard on a digital avatar? Not that hard. I, I think we we can we already can do that. That's yeah. what we did, we did our one. Yeah. yeah, actually, um, I can quickly show you because this is uh, this is what it looks like now. But I'll show you this here. So this is the picture I gave them as a reference, and uh, and this is what they made out of that. So it's pretty realistic, I think. Because originally, the first uh, image I got was this. This was one of the first uh, rough rough uh, things they made. And you can see here the eyes are not ready and the beard is different and the hair texture was different. And then I told uh, I told the John, uh, who's on uh, Mao's team, I said, him, well, there's some things I want. For example, I want to have my gray hair. A hair. I even have more gray hair on my avatar than I have in real life, which I think <laughs> is super cool. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty... Guys, yeah, I, I guess uh, we 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 become uh, digital human nerds, <laughs> or you know that's the nice thing about my job. You know, you you kind of you can't just be an artist. You have to be also like a bit like a doctor. You know, a bit about anatomy. Yeah. You study the bugs and the muscles. Uh, if you don't study those, you you end up with uh, the less realistic uh, avatars yeah. that you see everywhere. <laughs> so Marky says, yeah, but I have a really big beard. So I think he's what he wants to know is about the whole uh, you know FX particle thing. I mean, if you have a really big beard, uh, how does that work? Can you can you can you make that work? Um, yeah, physics on the beard is insane, complex. Uh, it has so many uh, collision or you know it collides with each other. So usually, because we don't, if you don't zoom in, you probably won't see that it's actually intersecting. But 99% is, is intersecting the beard. Um, but so. So most of the hair or grooms you see these days are not physically accurate, but they just look okay from a certain distance. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that is the, the reality we're living. <laughs> but we're, that's, I mean, it's only a matter of time, right? Yeah, the point is, do, do you, you, will you ever see that the hair is not 100% uh, accurate? Probably you won't tell uh, unless you zoom in and uh, to the pixels. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I mean, even if you look at, I mean, the move from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5 already was a quantum leap, right? Going mm -hmm. into using Lumen and, and, and Nanites, uh, mm -hmm. suddenly, you know, everything is a lot more photorealistic. And I think that over the next few years, we can expect more software upgrades like that, that will mm -hmm. enable uh, people like you to, to make super realistic stuff. I mean, it's not so much uh, a matter of if it will be possible, but just a matter of when, right? Yeah, I always do the, maybe the technical, but I always uh, say that in order for us to make the perfect digital human, we need four things. We have the, the skin, the look, we have the brain, mm -hmm. uh, the voice, and you have also something called the movement or the non-verbal movement. Basically, what, a lot, what you see a lot with digital humans is that they are not moving, staring like this. Yeah. A bit robotic. So these are yeah. the... Uh, the movement that is often wrong, but you also uh, see a lot of company focusing on the voice. So we have voice, but the, the voice doesn't have a, a smart brain to drive the, the the voice. And you have company who work on the brain, but have no voice. So these are all disconnected uh, expertise, and you need to get everything perfectly in order to make the, the perfect digital human clone. And yeah. 
with replica, we focus more on the, the skin and the, the, the superstitious part. But maybe one day we will also doing uh, voice and brains and you know and the other stuff. Uh, but that's what it takes to 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 make a human real. Yeah. 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 Cool. Thank you, Mao, for uh, for all those answers. Um, I'm gonna quickly look at the Telegram chat because I think there was uh, Rochels, uh, who is a <laughs> bro. I can't stop laughing about your name every week again, Rochels. Okay. Anyway, Rochels is a regular. He always shows up, and uh, he says, uh, "Oh, this is funny, Mao. This is really funny. You know what he says in chat? We wonder if Replica would partner with Yom. Hmm. Interesting question. <laughs> well." Oh, it so happens you want to do the honors. No, I, I give you the, you the honor. Me, me the honors. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's. Uh... Oh wait, wrong wrong audio sample. Wrong audio <laughs> sample. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is with great pleasure uh, and a privilege that I announce officially to you today that your open metaverse, um, a beam up company, and replica, the world's Number one virtual photorealistic human studio. We are officially partnering up. Yes, we are. We're going to combine forces to get the best, most photorealistic avatars in the world from Replica and put them in the world's first layer one metaverse and the coolest environments that will be in existence. So, um, you yeah. got that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you got that right, Rogels. Well done. Um, it does kind of highlight, sorry to interrupt you, that we, uh, we, I'm also very proud that we are both a Dutch company operating in the metaverse and, you know, join force together. It, it's just like how, you know, same country. You know, I'm very proud of this collaboration and a uh, huge shout out to you and Alex and Jorrit and, uh, and, and everyone who's uh, involved with this, uh, the, this, uh, I'm really looking forward to work with you guys. Well, uh, like I said, Mao, I think it's our privilege to work with you. I've been joking around about that, uh, you know, the world's best 3D designer, but uh, I, ca I can honestly say that in every single conversation that we've lately had with uh, some really big clients that hopefully I'll be talking about more in the near future, um, we've been telling them about your work. And we've basically uh, been using you <laughs> to wow them <laughs> uh, because we we really, really, really appreciate your work. It's absolutely stunning. And it's just like you said, the fact that you guys are a Dutch company, that you're so close, uh, that we can team up together, go to each other's offices and really uh, push the limits on what is possible in the metaverse. Uh, you know, that's just amazingly, amazingly cool. Yeah. Wow. Well wow, <laughs> wow. cry, cry, tears. Oh. <laughs> anyway, um well, I think that uh that kind of wraps it up. That was the, the the climax of of the interview. So Mao, I, I don't know, thank you so much. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for is there anything that I missed? Is there anything that you still want to say? Uh anything you need to say to the audience? How much time do we have? <laughs> uh seven minutes. Well, you guys want to know the story about the Playboy. Oh, yes. Tell us the story about the Playboy. That, that's a nice rap, right? Yeah. So I, I created a girl called, called Alex. I'm sure you saw Alex. And she was uh, quite, she went viral in 2013. And a lot of people contacted me after that. And one of them is Playboy. And they asked me, hey, can you make her full body naked? I said, uh, <laughs> no, thank you. I can't do that. But I can... Uh, give you her permission to publish her in the tech column under the uh, the topic weird science, which is referring to the, the I think, the 90s series called... Uh, do, you, do you guys know weird science, the TV series? I, I About, do, yes, I do, yes. Yeah, so it, it's basically referring to that. So basically, uh, Alex is in the Playboy, so that's kind of like uh, saying that I am also in the Playboy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> guy, but, but she's she's there, and I actually I wish I have it here with me now. But... Is, is this uh, is this Alex? No, the the, oh. the blonde lady. I got it's the wrong. Uh... Which one? Yeah. The the blonde lady. I mean, I oh, this is it. this is a real person. By the way, uh, while you're looking for that, I'll also look for it. But uh, so this woman on the left is real, and the woman on the right is uh, CGI uh, avatar made by by Mao. Yes. Um. Ah, oh, yeah. Where is the replica? I... 
We don't have it here, unfortunately. Okay, but uh, I'm sure you can find it on my website. Yeah, you guys can still look it up. At least, let's be honest. Everybody is already okay. googling Playboy, Alex, Mao, Li, 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 Lin Liao now. So you end up with the other Alex, uh, your boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting uh, naked avatar pictures of uh, Alex, uh, legacy, uh, legacy <laughs> Alex. Um, okay, so cool. Um, um, so I have two more questions. Very important question before we finish it all up: cats or dogs? Excuse me? <laughs> Cats or dogs? Me? Uh, I'm... Um, well, can I say no? Both? Yeah, of no? course. Of course. Yeah. I don't, have pets. I don't have pets. Sorry. No? No No. No virtual uh, avatar pet somewhere? Never had pets no. in my life. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then last question. If people want to know more about you and about Replica, where do they need to go? Because y your marketing sucks. Uh, I have an Instagram account, but it's very, very hard to follow. But I would say go to www.replica with a B and a B. K and a K dot, dot com. B for That's brilliant, what? by the way. Yeah. Like we're, we're genius at your open metaverse, but they're brilliant at Replica, just so you know. So, yeah, um, yeah www.replica with a B dot com. Uh, yeah. Everybody that's watching this, if you're watching this live today or if you're watching this in the future, Mao's work, Replica's work is amazing, and um, because they're they're true artists, they're not really focused on on making sure that the world knows about it. So I'm asking you guys and my own marketing team, we really have to make a serious effort because Replica deserves to get more attention. Mao deserves to get more attention. What you guys are doing is absolutely amazing. I'm so happy with this partnership, Mao. Thank you so much for being on the show today, and um, yeah, see you soon again, I guess. Yeah, come over and have a beer and uh, I really appreciate the time and the effort and promoting us. And uh, I thank you so much, uh, Aragon. See you in the, in the metaverse. Absolutely. See you in the metaverse. Cool. Well, um, how much time do we have left? Three minutes on the clock. Doing pretty well, I think. That's basically it for today. Um, what's left? What are we doing this week with your open metaverse? Uh, of course, Daniel van der Waals, our very own founder, aka Mr. Fox, he is doing another metaverse exploring exploration uh, this week with Brendan O'Neill, the founder of Sombra, who will be doing a keynote in, is it Alt Space VR or Spatial this week? I'm not sure. One of these in virtual reality. And he's going to talk about uh, Sombra, their social NFT marketplace you can join the metaverse exploring group every wednesday at 4 p.m cet and you can join the group on linkedin to get updates on what's going on there um another special uh, update next week we have a very 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 special edition of state of the metaverse because it will be live a live event taking place at our headquarters in utrecht the netherlands we will have up to about 150 guests we're gonna have five spe four speakers um, we're going to have Nick Yop from Interverse, who will tell us everything about voices in the metaverse. We're going to have Christian Eisberg, the CEO of Straightfire, who says that NFTs are emotions you own. And we're going to have the famous uh, former host of Brain Games and National Geographic, uh, our very own Jason Silva. If you don't know who Jason Silva is, go watch Shots of Awe on YouTube. Go check him out on Facebook. He has about 2 million followers um, this guy is absolutely brilliant. We're super happy to have him do a keynote at our event uh, talking about how the metaverse is really externalized imagination. It's going to be super cool. So uh, make sure that you uh, are live at the event in Utrecht. You can get tickets online. Or if you can make it, uh, there will be a live stream from 4 to 5, just like this week. But the event next week will start at 12.30 and go till 6 in the evening. Uh, drinks are, are, are going to be there. There's going to be nice things to eat. Uh, amazing presentations like i said it's gonna be super friggin awesome don't miss it um that's it if you uh think that this was a nice show if you like our shows make sure to follow subscribe like comment uh, go to spotify we're also on spotify now we're on google Podcasts and on amazon go leave us a like go leave us a review to make sure that more people get on these shows uh, see what we're doing, hear what we're doing, learn about the metaverse. That's it. 
Thank you so much. See you next week. That's me, Aragorn, signing off. Bye-bye. Wow, better not. Thank you, Alaoua. Well, stop. Ja, toch? Ah, super mooi. Dankjewel, ik vond het echt een uh, leuk gesprek. <laughs> nou, dat had toch niemand gehoord. Oh, Markie zegt dat we niet muted. Ja, we zijn wel muted, toch? Nee, we zijn gewoon muted. Hij weet niet waar hij het over heeft.